Hi, it's Luke from the Luke Who's Talking podcast, where I, Luke, talk about things that are, well, happening in my life, and I'll probably say words that you've never heard before, like flat out like a lizard drinking. That's actually not really a word, that's like a phrase. Anyway, you can find the podcast on iTunes. I'm not calling it Apple Podcasts, okay? Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, iHeartRadio, and or you can just Yahoo, Luke Who's Talking. People still use Yahoo, don't they? Beginning on that old podcast in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1... Welcome to the Odd Dad Out Podcast, where normal is not my specialty. I am your host, as always, the eternally frazzled Adam Higgins, the Odd Dad Out. You can find me at odddadoutpodcast.com and at Odd Dad Out on all the social media places. And this is the show where I ramble and rant and empty out all of whatever the hell's going on in my brain. I make fun of some weird shit from the news, because I'm a jerk like that. And I tell you about a podcast or event or something that I think you should be tuning into and listening to and subscribe to and all those fun things because sharing is caring. Because I like telling you about things. Because, yeah. <laughs> so, I'm pulling back the curtain. Like, I, is there is there a curtain on this show? I don't know if there's a curtain on this show, but... Pulling back the curtain because of my interview with Paul from Varmints, I seriously tried so hard over and over and over again. I was trying to do like a really over dramatic NPR intro for this, and I just couldn't hold it together. <laughs> I really couldn't. I'm just like, welcome to the Odd Dad Out podcast. And I couldn't, I, I couldn't maintain that and not have all of the the little inflections that paul was calling me out on (laughs) where normal is not my specialty like i still fucking inflect i have that same inflection and so i was like damn it i couldn't do it but (laughs) because i haven't said it how are you doing listener how are you i really want to know really you can answer i promise i'm not going to make fun of you like like uh, the guys from we watched a thing because they were giving each other shit about that. I'm sorry. I do it every week. I want to know how you are. You can hit me up on the social medias. I already told you where to find me. Tell me. How are you? Just saying. Because I'm... Because I care. I care. Okay, I'm an asshole, but I care. Anyway. <laughs> because I'm a clown. And I care about other people's... I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me this morning. No, I'm... I'm tired. Okay, I'm always tired. That's not really an excuse for anything for me. But yeah, <laughs> it's just been like so much going on because school started this week. And so, you know, basically between when we got back from vacation and then now, so we basically had two weeks from when we got back from vacation to when school started to do all of the school prep. And if you've got kids back to school sucks, period. I don't care it, because school supplies are fucking expensive because they want you to basically, it's like when they ask for school supplies and I've bitched about this before. I think I bitch about this every back to school, but when they ask, they send out a school supply list that is basically every student has enough supplies for like the whole class. And I'm fairly certain they don't bank on every kid bringing all of it because it's several hundred dollars of supplies per child. That's not cool. That's expensive. I have three kids because bugs started kindergarten this year. So more, one more kid worth of supplies. Oh yeah. And like kindergarten, they ask for more shit than any other grade. Like Charlie started fifth grade this year. He had the smallest box of stuff minus the fact that for whatever reason, maybe just because Jeremy kids, uh, the fifth grade supply list had more tissues on it. And it's always like every class they always ask for, especially now they ask for like Clorox wipes 
and uh, uh, tissues for like, you know, none of the word like Kleenex. I realized because of the word tissue technically is a neutral term for a bunch of things. I'm like, none of the word for tissues, like, you know, but anyway, Kleenex, they asked for, it, he asked for like six where Bug only needed two. And I'm sorry, I figure like kindergartners are going to be a lot more snotty than fifth graders, just saying. But anyway, we had basically two weeks to put all this together. And on top of that, we also needed to get their uniforms in order. And because I have all boys, naturally, last year, they basically destroyed all of their uniform pants, just playground, PE, whatever, abuse and tearing holes in the knees. So all of them needed all new pants. Bug basically needed all the new uniforms, but then because Charlie has gotten bigger, he went up a size in their school uniform shirts because they do have uniforms from their school. So we had to go buy all new uniforms for him. We needed a couple of shirts for Damien. Bug needed a couple of shirts, but I ended up spending almost $160 just on uniform shirts. Plus, I think we spent two to three hundred dollars on pants and shorts for them for school oh yeah and around three to about i think we spent around three hundred dollars or more on school supplies and i'm sure you're sitting there saying hey i thought you said it was a couple hundred dollars per kid it is last year we stocked the hell up and we actually have a stockpile we have a whole shelf like cabinet of extra school supplies and pencils and crayons and markers and all of the things. We just stockpile that shit because we get a ton of them whenever we're on vacation from my mother-in-law because she's a school teacher. So at the end of her year, basically when they have a lot of excess, whatever excess supplies, uh, you know, glue sticks or any papers or anything that she can help out with and stuff that they buy, she actually sends us back on vacation from vacation with a bunch of school supplies. She probably covers half our list. And so it's just as she knows what the general stuff is. We actually send her the list and she gets what she can and send us back with about half of the list probably. And then we take care of between what we had on hand already. And then what we bought, we still had to spend about $300 after everything that we had and what they, they gave us. That's a lot of money again. And when we spent all that money on uniforms and bug needed a new backpack and they all needed new lunch boxes. And we went ahead this year and decided we've done the cheesy, you know, character backpacks, Avengers and Spider-Man's and all of that stuff. We've done all of that stuff for years just because they liked it. And be it'd be get the backpack and it comes with the lunch box that matches. And so, you know, it's the matching thing. The problem was half the time those things didn't survive the year. They're just never made that well. The straps would tear or they would rip or something. But by the end of the year, those things were trash and you'd have to replace them every year. And not to be all conspiracy theory, but I'm fairly certain they're designed that way on purpose. That they want you to buy the new character backpack every year. And those things are like $30. Well, we decided, you know what, screw it. We're going to go ahead and just invest in good backpacks and got them all and around it was the end of last year we because charlie had ripped through two backpacks last year damien's straps were uh tearing on his so we just said you know what we're gonna get jan sport backpacks you know, because why because jan sport backpacks have a lifetime warranty on them not shilling for jan sport or anything but i never knew that it was one of those fuck these really basic backpacks are really expensive why is this super basic backpack really expensive and then i looked at the thing i was like oh this thing has a lifetime warranty yeah i'll pay 40 dollars for a lifetime warranty on a backpack absolutely because it's all they need they don't need a fancy backpack they're color-coded because everything we do with our boys is color-coded so they each have their color-coded backpacks and this year since we didn't have the fancy you know matching lunch boxes to go along with their backpacks, we decided, you know what? Let's get matching lunchboxes to go with their backpacks. Because guess what? Jansport makes lunchboxes too, with the same warranty. They actually make two. They have one that's just like a bag that's 
it kind of replaces your your brown bag uh, lunch bag, which anytime you need a brown bag in school, it's for a field trip, so you can't actually use those. But whatever. And then they have another one that basically is just a small version of their backpack. <laughs> so you have a we they all have a mini JanSport backpack lunchbox now. Granted, they only came in black, so we had to actually put their names on them versus all of their backpacks being color coded. But it's just kind of funny that now they have basically lifetime warranty backpacks and lunch boxes that we're not going to have to replace these things probably until high school just for the size requirements. But they've stood up to everything so far and we're liking them. And again, lifetime warranty. Yay. Totally worth the money. But again, had to spend all that money. Ugh, God, I hate this time of year. We're just bleh. We're just gushing money because of back to school and it just drives me nuts. But we had to do all this in basically the course of a week, week and a half. Because last Friday was back to school or not back to school was the uh, meet the teacher night. And so I had to have all of the supplies there. We had to have all the supplies. We had to go buy the last of the shirts that night because they didn't have them all when I'd gone before. Uh, So many shirts. But I had to have all the supplies and then I had to go through and sort all of the supplies and get all of their individual boxes ready because as much as my wife walks them to class on the first day, if you've ever been one of those parents on the first day of school, bringing in the school supply list it is a nightmare. And again, we have a wagon and we make use of this wagon for cargo like this. Because when you have two kids or three and you've got kindergarten and second grade and fifth grade supplies that you've got to haul across the entire school, because of course they're not all on the same side of the school. That's a really wide age range. You need something to carry that shit with. (laughs) So we load all all the stuff into the wagon and haul it around the school (laughs) and half the teachers like, that's a good idea. Why didn't I think there's like maybe two parents that we see every year that other than us that have a wagon and that's it. It's it, it, why, because there's a lot of shit, a lot of shit to haul, but it's, it's, Oh God. I, I'm not, a, I'm not one of those dads who I go to all the things I go to all the concerts. I go to, I have to do all of the parent teacher conferences because they all happen during my wife's work hours. That she works in the day, I work at night. You know this. So whenever we have parent teacher conferences and meet the teachers, now when it's like meet the teacher night like this, she always takes the night. She got out of work early that night so that she could go too because she wants to meet the teachers. Um and it also helps her with because first day she wants to be the one to take them to class the first day. She does not go to work on the first day of school so she can take them to school and pick them up on their first day and get all the excited stories about first day. Well, it helps on for her to go to meet the teacher night because then she knows where the classrooms are and then they know where the classrooms are and we can take all of the supplies and shit with us that night. And you don't have to take them on the first day when everybody's running around with their heads, chicken heads cut off. Yeah. That just take that saying, you know, that chickens and heads and running around stuff. Yeah. You know what that is, but (laughs) <laughs> but yeah, so we, we do all of that, but I'm the guy who's there doing the meet, doing the, the parent teacher conferences and going to all the concerts and doing all the stuff. I really don't like doing these things. And it's really just a matter of, because I'm not a very social person in general and I don't like going. <laughs> There's so many people around and it's awkward sitting there and and talking to my kids teachers and it's not that I don't want to know and I'm not invested in their their work I work with them every night doing their homework and all of that stuff I work you know I I'm I'm the one who's there with them while they're working on homework and answering questions and helping them with all of that every night but I just really don't like going to the school <laughs> I just don't I don't like going places even though I have to do all the things and go all the places for all the stuff that they have to do but yeah, <laughs> but yeah, 
it's just a fun time. So much going on. And on top of all of this, with all of this going on and all this scrambling to get ready for school and back to school and and meet the teachers and first days and getting settled in back into our new routine because it's a it's only like the third day of school back right now. And so we're all still kind of getting back into it because my home schedule just changed because I went from, like I said, at the beginning of the summer, I went from having the two little boys with me to all the boys with me. And then they did their little summer camp thing, but which was kind of a dry run for now. But now that they're all back in school, well, I've got three out of four boys in school now. So now it's just me and Sam and we're still kind of getting into our groove now because it was very different in the summer where they were only there until about noon. We would drop them off. They'd be gone for a few hours. We'd go pick them up for lunch. That was it. It was a very short day. It didn't, it, it didn't affect our day too much. And so it, it was, it was a very different dynamic in the summer. Now it's back to our regular routine, but it's also the first week of school where all of the newbie parents don't know shit about pickup line. And so it's just chaos in the end of the day and it takes forever. And instead of getting home at like three ten, I'm not getting home until like three thirty, and uh, so much headache, which like I said, eats away. And if you're listening to like last week when I was talking with Paul about my after afternoon routine during school, is it pick the boys up, get home, they start homework. I start dinner, we eat dinner, I go to work in a very, very quick uh, rate. So I basically have, between when I get home to when I have to leave, I have a little over an hour and a half. And that's a lot of stuff to cram into an hour and a half. Well, if I'm getting home like 20 or 30 minutes later than normal, that's a big percentage of time. That's like double digit percentage of time that I'm not there. I don't have to get stuff done. So it's messing it all up. And to add one more heaping helping of, of, of not, not stress. It's actually kind of a relief, but last Monday, Sam out of nowhere, randomly decided he didn't want to wear diapers anymore. He didn't want to wear pull-ups anymore. He just wanted to go potty. Now he literally just turned four yesterday. We have been trying to get him potty trained for a year and a half. We've basically for as long as he's been able to, to walk and communicate clearly. We've been trying to potty train him. We've had the potty seat. We've had the the stools. We've had all, we've been trying. He has been refusing. (laughs) And with each of our boys, it's been very different. You know, with Damien, he pretty much, he saw his brother doing it. So as soon as he was capable of getting up and doing it, he did it. He was fine. Bug was like, nah, I'm good. And he was, he didn't really care. He's also much more, laid back about stuff and if you're willing to do the thing for him he's totally willing to let you do the thing for him so if you're gonna pick him up and you're gonna change him and clean him up why do i gotta do that why do i gotta walk all the way to the bathroom and and clean myself up and wash my hands and do that when i can just say hey dad i'm wet and you gotta come change me (laughs) and sam was kind of he just didn't want to deal with it I think he just didn't want, it was new. He didn't want to do it. He didn't like having to sit there. And then because we didn't use a, you know, one of those little baby seats on the toilet for him. So he was kind of having to do the prop himself up bit. The, I think it was also the fear of falling in (laughs) when you're two, two and a half and you're on the small side. I think fear of falling in is a legit concern. So fine. But he just completely out of nowhere decided, uh, nope, I'm I'm done with the diapers and pull-ups and all of that. And he woke me up on Monday morning last week and said, Dad, I need to go potty. And this is like six in the morning. I'm like, Dad, I need to go potty. I'm like, okay. Right there. <laughs> like, because my side of the bed is next to the bathroom. So there's like two, maybe three feet between me and the bathroom if he's waking me up in the morning like okay go right there and then help him take his you know uh diaper off and all this stuff and he goes and for the rest of the day it's the same way 
And I actually went ahead since like, hey, he said he wanted to to go potty. So I'm going to stick him in a pull up, see how he does the whole rest of the day. Every time he stayed in a dry pull up the whole and he just flipped the switch out of nowhere. And he's like, no, I'm going potty today. I'm going to start using the potty from here on out. And that's it. I'm like, Well, damn. <laughs> Why wasn't it this easy with the rest of uh, the whole rest of you? We had to train and we had to work with you with him. It's basically been a kind of he's still at that stage where he I, you don't trust him to clean up himself. That's it. It's like he's going to try. Not going to trust him to do a good job of it. So if he's if he's got an extended bathroom stay, then you're going to check up on him and make sure he's all cleaned up and everything. And there's still the reminder of wash your hands, blah, 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 blah. Do all the things, you know, turn off the lights, put the lid down. And they have their own bathroom in the hallway and my wife never uses it. And she's the only woman in the house. So it's not really a matter of, you know, oh, lid down for no, it's more of the put the lid down because then the dog doesn't drink toilet water. But <laughs> it just it was crazy. It was, it was really was a case of, okay, he's just decided he's going to start using the potty. Cool. And after a couple of days, you're like, all right, let's go buy him his own underwear then because he's doing good. And it was basically a, okay, every day he's got his own underwear and it during nap time, like at bedtime at night, we stick him in a pull up. We stick him in one of those like overnights, uh, the good nights, I think they're called where it's just an overnight pull up just in case because he's still little, he's still getting used to it. And especially even, you know, probably until you're like five, it still happens that you might just not wake up when you have to pee. That just is a thing. We've dealt with it with all of the boys in that age of, yeah, they're normally they're going on their own and they're fine, but that doesn't mean that they won't, not wake up one time and pee in the bed. And especially when he's only been at this for a couple of weeks, actually for the first time. And it's actually pretty impressive. He has managed to stay dry overnight ever since he flipped that switch and said, I need, you know, I'm using the potty on my own. I'm good. No more diapers. And man, does he get pissed if you try and put him, which kind of sucks because we still had a bunch of them left over from vacation, but he except that at night he has to wear a pull-up just in case. But he's only had one night out of the last two weeks where he did not wake up dry and immediately get up and go to the bathroom on his own. He's had one night where he woke up and he had peed in his pull-up. That was it. I'm like, wow, none of the boys had this track record. (laughs) Granted, they also started going by themselves a little bit earlier. But still... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> from the point where he made that switch to now in those first two weeks, he's only had one overnight incident. And he, so he hasn't, we haven't had to change his bed sheets. He hasn't peed in his bed and he's taken a lot of naps in our bed, which we <laughs> starts getting a little nervous, but he is not, he has not wet a bed yet, which is damn impressive. You know, he knows before he goes to bed, he has to go to the bathroom before all and all the stuff. And so he's he's getting like adult bathroom routines down pretty well (laughs) because, you know, when you're an adult, you know, you got to go to the bathroom before bed or you're going to end up waking up in the middle of the night. And you usually have to go as soon as you wake up in the morning. He's pretty much got all that down now (laughs) at four and he's four by like a day because his birthday was actually just yesterday. And. I have a four-year-old now Oof. again, <laughs> but it, it's crazy. It's just crazy how he just flipped that switch one day and decided he was going to, nope, I'm doing the potty thing now. And now he's irate. If you want even consider a diaper, he will, again, he will accept that he has to use a pull up for bed at night, but that's it. He's like, oh, all right, that's it. It's like, if you're getting pajamas, you're getting a pull up right now. And it'll probably stay that way for a few weeks just as a precaution. But that's it. And any other time we're like, hey, we're going to be gone for a long time. Let's put on a pull up just in case. But even with that, 
we haven't had any trouble. He's still going like meet the teacher night was a few hours long. Like, we don't know. Made sure he went before we left. And while we were there, like, hey, dad, I need to go to the bathroom. We go to the bathroom. It worked. He was fine. Yay. Most successful passive potty training ever. <laughs> Just wait until he decided. <laughs> but I think that's enough about, you know, child potty training and stuff like that. That's an, that, I went on way too long about potty training. <laughs> I'm going to take a quick break and play some promos and I will be right back with the news. Hey everyone, I'm Danny over here at the Wheel Weaves podcast where we're diving into the series The Wheel of Time. Are you a super fan? Awesome. Never heard of it? No problem. The Wheel of Time is one of the top-selling fantasy series ever, and it was picked up by Amazon to be the next big TV show. Our podcast is safe for first-time readers because it's made by me, a first-time reader. I'm joined by my co-host Brett, a longtime fan, who is acting as my tour guide as we journey into the series for chapter analysis, character breakdown, and probably wrong predictions. Find us at the Wheel Weaves podcast on social media and listen in on your favorite podcasting app. Are you into stories played out like movie scenes, audio dramas, or real play style podcasts? On Rolling Misadventures, a group of podcasters take time away from their respective shows to sit down and play a game called Fiasco. With a whole lot of improv and a little bit of tabletop banter, we create short stories where everything can and will go wrong. From a sci-fi cloning mishap... Uh, we were making some clones and, uh, made an extra. You! To Victorian-era lovers trying to escape a failing playhouse... You, sir, are the pelican. The pelican of my dreams. The pelican of my heart. Yeah, then, Helen, you're the albatross of my loins. And then he vomits. And even an action-packed 80s heist. What what, what does he look like? What kind of type does he look like? He definitely doesn't look like a cop. There's plenty of variety to check out as we wrap up our stories every month to keep things fresh. Check us out at RollingMisadventures.com or search for us on Apple Podcasts. Google Play, Spotify, and your podcatcher of choice. Bullshit from the news. What's that sound? That's right. That means it is in all jackasses news this week. Why? Because I've gotten behind on these. <laughs> That's the that's the gist of it. I, I I've just I've gotten behind on them. <laughs> but let's start off with easily the least jackassy and mostly just stupid of the three this week. Texas woman sues grocery store because she walked into their window. Yeah, the fuck. This just sounds like um you should have been paying more attention. But let's move on. Texas woman is suing a Kroger market for up to $1 million after she walked into a window that appeared to her as an open doorway. (laughs) So this is in San Antonio, which, uh, poor San Antonio. So she's actually not just suing the grocery store which is, again, it's a Kroger marketplace, which is kind of surprising in San Antonio that there's anything besides H-E-B, but if you know Texas, you know, understand that. But, yeah, she's suing the construction company for basically installing a floor-to-ceiling window. I guess it's just one of those big, solid-pane windows where... (laughs) And she thought it was just an open doorway and walked into it. The article doesn't say that she walked through it, like shattered it. And again, this is a floor to ceiling window. So theoretically, if she had actually, and I'm assuming like she had her cart with her, if she was going full force, nonchalant, la, 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 and crashed her shopping cart through a floor to ceiling window, I could see I don't see a lawsuit, but I could see serious injuries. I could see suing for injuries. She is claiming she sustained serious injuries, but the article doesn't say that she walked through it because that would be pretty dramatic because that's a lot of glass that would have 
absolutely fallen down on a person had they walked through a window. So if if that was the case, yes, I understand. You wouldn't have to sue. The place would be totally covering your bills just as a matter of insurance. You would be fine because of insurance. But she's suing the construction company. That is the part that's getting me. It's like, wait, you're suing the construction company because you thought that this, I have to assume, very clean. <laughs> Basically because this window is so clean, I didn't even see it was there. And you walked through it. Again, doesn't say she walked through it. It says she walked, it's a quote, the woman walked toward what appeared to be an open doorway, but instead of a doorway, the woman walked directly into a clear floor-to-ceiling window. And again, she's claiming she sustained serious injuries. What injuries? Again, unless she shattered this window and it came crashing down on her, I, what injuries? Because you're just not paying attention. It's because you're being a dumb shit and you were probably on your phone and you're nah, nah, and you're sitting there not paying attention as you're walking out of the grocery store. How the f- and how the fuck do you not know where the door is? You walked in. <laughs> you know what a door looks like in a grocery store. How do you not know that you're walking towards the door? Or that there's a window there? I mean, fine. It's a floor to ceiling window. Fine. But how do you not know where the door is? That you walked into a window instead of a door. Just saying. Huh. I don't, like, I, I, I'm I hoping this gets thrown out just because it's stupid. Because it basically amounts to, I was too stupid to know the difference between a window and an open door. And I walked into a window. Now, I've walked into a window before. <laughs> I did this on a job site. But it was because it was, again, floor to ceiling window next to the door. And... I wasn't looking. I was looking at the thing. I was, I was like picking up a bucket and went to take a step because I just see open next to me. And it turns out that what was, I almost crashed into a window because it was right next to the door, <laughs> but that was, all, and I, and my coworker with me that night also wouldn't let me forget it for a few weeks, but this is a, in a grocery store. You have to have some level of attention. So the only thing that it amounts to is she wasn't paying fucking attention. She was being stupid and walked into a window. <laughs> uh, people are dumb. People are dumb. People are dumb. All right. Let's keep moving on. Let's see. Trailer park fire started by man clearing weeds with a blowtorch. Uh, and you, you know it's going to be good when you've got trailer park and blowtorch in the same story. <laughs> a Michigan man was using a blowtorch to clear away the weeds outside of his trailer home. Which then basically caused the fire to spread, burning through two homes and damaging a third. <laughs> uh. They had to evacuate dozens of people. Hazmat had to deal with gas leaks because fire and propane tanks in trailer homes. Um, yeah. <laughs> it, the fuck? It's why? 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 Why would you? Okay. It looks cool. <laughs> but you know what? A weed eater is also a lot more effective than a blowtorch. I mean, maybe if you had like a full backpack flamethrower, that would be an effective means of clearing brush, but not when you're in a trailer park, not when you've got fire next to very flimsily constructed homes. What? <sighs> it's, I hate to say it. This story screams redneck so bad, you can taste it. <laughs> and it tastes like moonshine. <laughs> uh, he had to be drunk. He had to be drunk. It said nothing about that. But the, the fact that he was using a blowtorch to get rid of weeds, that's just inefficient. It's 
just inefficient. Ah. Uh, it sucks. The, the one story said that somebody did lose their pet in the fire, which sucks. So that's fucked up. So, yeah, I, I'm, I'm fairly certain this dude is going to end up going, doing some sort of jail time for this. Just, you know, negligent arson, not arson, but I don't know the, the amount of damage he caused. He's, he's going to have to do something. I don't know. He'll have some time. I'm sure. Even if it is like, it, it seems like it's an accident, but it's fucking stupid accident. But let's wrap this all up with one of those dumb criminals that you just have to face palm. <laughs> uh, man arrives to court on car theft charges in a stolen car. <laughs> oh, man. This one is in Adelaide, Australia. Now, I will say this wasn't a case of they caught him at the courthouse in a stolen vehicle. But basically what happened is police see a car parked in a fast food place. It doesn't say what. And they see, oh, it fits the description of a uh, stolen vehicle. They check. Yep, this is the stolen car. They question the driver. Turns out this guy was just in court, like had just left court. For driving a stolen vehicle. <laughs> so he was promptly arrested. And so was his passenger. What the hell kind of idiot shows up to court? That's like, this is up there with the, I think it was a, another case where a guy showed up to work on drug charges with drugs on him when he got to the courthouse. <laughs> And you know what? I've, I've, I've covered enough of these kind of stories where it's just like dumb criminals are always trying to one up each other on how dumb can they be like, Oh, you showed up to face drunk charges with weed in your pocket. Hold my beer. <laughs> no, that would be even better that he showed up to court drunk in a stolen vehicle. <laughs> just, that's the next step. That's going to be the next guy. <laughs> And to add insult to injury or icing on the cake, he also had a suspended driver's license. <laughs> Look here, you're in a stolen vehicle again, and your license is suspended. Dude, dude isn't getting bail. He's not getting bail or out. I, he's not getting out. Just let's face it. He's not getting out anytime soon. <laughs> Fucking jackass. <laughs> Recommended listening. Hello, it's Heather from the Sunshine and Power Cats podcast. In association with Geeks Rising from the 10th to the 16th of August or 11th to the 17th if you're here in New Zealand, we are hosting the second 2019 Sunshine Summit. It's a week of live streams with amazing content creators and their communities with the theme of celebrating connections. All of the details for the upcoming summit, as well as replays from our previous events and where the live streams will be happening, can be found at sunshinesummit.live. A huge thank you to the patrons of Sunshine and Power Cuts for making it possible. So check it out, and if you know our guests, we'd love for you to come and celebrate with us. And if they're new to you, come along and learn more about them, and we look forward to celebrating connections with you. That's right, dear listener. It is time for the August Sunshine Summit brought to you by Heather from Sunshine and Power Cuts. This is the event she does twice a year talking about connections and bringing people together. I am a big supporter of this event. I have not participated in either of them for this year, but I was part of the first two. And every time she does this and she does one in March and she does one in August, that it it just brings people together. And it really is an amazing opportunity to be introduced to creators and podcasters and just general people around the world that have all become connected through Heather. The one common thing that we all have that have participated over the last two years is our connection to Heather. 
and the friendships that we've all built from that, because being a part of this from the beginning and, and participating from the beginning, I have made a great number of friends and connected with a lot of other people that I otherwise wouldn't have through the sunshine summit. And this time around, there's a whole new group of people, a few returning faces, which is nice, like Derek from rolling misadventures and Kate from ignorance was bliss who I believe they're actually going to be talking about their new project, Life World. Lisa and Sam from I Shake My Head are coming back this time. We also have guys coming from the Geeks Rising Podcast Network, which Heather is part of. We have Chris Curran from the Podcast Engineering School, which is really cool. That's a that's a big name in the industry as far as you know, like, I look at it. Like, this guy's a name. In podcasting, this guy's a somebody. So, um, we have Chris Green from Gravity Beard and creator of the Underdog Podcasters group on Facebook. We have the ladies of the NRI Woman Podcast. We have Ben Brown from the Tourette's Podcast. There's going to be a whole panel from the Crossplay Compatible group, including Chris from Play Comics, Carrington from Real Dudes Podcast, and Roger from the Gamerheads Podcast. And ah, so much, I I feel like I'm missing somebody because I was jumping around. I'm sorry. (laughs) There's, uh, there's so much going on. So many people and so, so many new faces. And I love seeing like guys like Chris and Lisa and Sam and Kate and Derek that are all friends, but also, and then, and then Bandrew from the Geeks Rising Network. There's just so many people and so many connections across is it nine days, I believe, double checking in front of me. <laughs> yeah, uh, Nine days with I lost count of how many guests because this time there's a lot of like panels like there's the Geeks Rising panel. It's going to have, I think, four guests on it. You get the crossplay compatible panel has three other guys on. So there's so many people and just so much going on and cramming all of this into nine days starting Saturday the 10th or Sunday the 11th. If you're in one of those time zones on the other side of the dateline, you know who you are. But starting with Saturday the 10th, it's going to be crazy. It is just going to be crazy. It always is. It's always so much fun. And you always learn so much about these people and what they they do. And the the whole assortment of guests this time around, way more informative than me. These are people that you can have that you're going to learn something from and you're going to much deeper connections than listening to me ramble and (laughs) all that stuff here. So you need to check it out. It is at sunshine summit dot live again, live stream starting on Saturday, August 10th, 2019. Just throwing it out there. If you're listening in the future, in the future, sorry, I'm a dork. Leave me alone. But again, sunshinesummit.live, sunshineandpowercuts.com. And if you want to catch up on the previous summit streams before the, the next one, it's all right there for you. You can catch the ones that I was on. You can catch the one in March that I wasn't on. Maybe I'll come back for the next one in March. I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> I'm still spastic. Sorry. I'm just, I'm, 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 I'm in a one of those days. <laughs> But that's going to do it for me this week. Thank you so much for being you and being awesome. And thank you to all of my awesome Patreon supporters, including a lot of names I just mentioned, like Heather from Sunshine and Power Cuts, Kate from Ignorance Was Bliss, Lisa and Sam from I Shake My Head, and Chris from Play Comics. Thank you all. You are awesome. And if you want to have your name and your, your stuff mentioned here at the show you can support me at patreon.com slash odd dad out remember you can get all the past episodes and links to subscribe to the show and social media all the stuff at odd podcast.com if you have any whatever the hell you feel like hit me up show at odd dad or on the facebook twitter instagram places at odd dad out 
because I'm simple that way. And let's not forget the Oddballs Facebook group. Come join me. It's fun. I'm a goofball. Share stupid stuff. Or just vent. Whatever. I don't care. But come join me because because you're cool. Because you've made it this far. You're cool. You should be in the group. Just saying. But <laughs> I've rambled and ranted and all of that enough. I, I seem to say every time as this gets longer. But until next week, Oddballs. Thank you and good night. <laughs>